Okay, so in the previous video we looked at um, sketching parabolas given in turning point form and today we just want to uh, make a small addition to that which is to say that if we're not given the quadratic equation in turning point form, so say for example we're given it in this expanded out form 2x squared plus 7x minus 3, we know already from our quadratics unit that we can convert to com to turning point form through the process of completing the square. That's the form of the quadratic we create when we complete the square. And so therefore, um, completing the square becomes a really useful and important tool when we're sketching parabolas. So you'll recall back um, in the quadratic equations um, unit when I uh, when we learned about completing the square. I mentioned back in that unit that to me um, it wasn't an important, it isn't an important technique for solving quadratic equations. I would never use completing the square to solve a quadratic equation. If the quadratic equation doesn't factorise, I would use the quadratic formula, which is the shortcut for completing the square. However, this is a moment where completing the square is an important and necessary technique. So um, we want to look at, okay, if we're not given our equation in turning point form, how can we convert it to turning point form so that we can then sketch the graph just as we looked at in the previous video? In the next few videos, we'll also have a look at, okay, what are some other options? Do we have to convert the equation to turning point form in order to sketch the graph? We'll have a look at some other options, um, but this is an important um, process to be able to do. As we know, um, straight away from turning point form, you can know where the turning point is, whether the graph is, uh, sorry, where the turning point is, whether the graph is a happy or a sad parabola, and hence you've already got a lot of information about what it looks like. Um, in this more general um, quadratic equation form, so y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, you, you can't really tell very much about the graph at all from just looking at that equation. So when sketching parabolas, turning point form is helpful, hence the process of completing the square to convert to turning point form is helpful. Okay, so let's do that. Let's, um, and through that, obviously, review our um, turning point form, our completing the square process. Um, I'll link to the completing the square video um, at this point, if I can, on YouTube. Um, and so you can click to that to go back to that point if you need to. Uh, okay, so y equals x squared plus 6x plus 4. So you'll remember that what we need to do is turn something that isn't a perfect square into a perfect square. So remembering perfect squares are when we have x plus a, well I'll do plus minus, plus or minus a, all squared, and we know when they expand out we get x squared plus or minus 2ab, sorry 2ax plus a squared. Okay. So what we want to look for is if when I halve and square the coefficient of x, if I get the constant term when I do that, then what I have is a perfect square. Okay. If it isn't, however, I want to create it. Okay. And then remember the other important step is to get from the expanded out version to the factorized version that um, the number in the bracket is half of the number, um, the coefficient of x. Okay, so here x squared plus 6x plus 4 isn't a perfect square because if we halve and square 6, we don't get 4. Okay, so what we want to think about is, okay, what do I get if I halve and square 6? I'm going to leave my plus 4 over here. So half of 6 is 3 and 3 squared is 9. So I need to have plus 9 here in order to make that a perfect square. I can't just add 9 in because I feel like it. So in order to keep these two things still equal to each other, I'm also going to subtract 9. Okay, so my perfect square is x plus half of 6, which is 3, all squared. And then outside of the bracket, I've got minus 9 and plus 4, so that is minus 5. So here is my equation now in turning point form. It is the same equation as that, just written in a different form. And in turning point form, I can then answer the second part of this question, which says to hence, once you have completed the square, um, state the coordinates of the turning point. Okay. So the turning point in this instance has coordinates of negative 3, negative 5. So it's gone to the left by 3 and down by 5. Okay, let's have a go at part B. So um, y equals x squared minus 5x on, it on, on its own clearly isn't a perfect square. So we want to halve and square. Half of negative 5 is negative 5 on 2. And then we're going to square that, which will make it positive 25 on 4. So we're going to add 25 on 4. That makes a perfect square, but we can't just add on 25 on 4 because we feel like it. So we're also going to subtract 25 on 4. 
Okay, so those first three terms now become the perfect square. That is x minus, and remember it is half of uh, negative 5. So x minus 5 on 2, all squared. And then we've got the minus 25 on 4 outside. So we have completed the square to express our quadratic in turning point form. And from the turning point form, we can now tell that our turning point is at positive 5 on 2, right by 5 on 2, and negative 25 on 4, down by 25 on 4. So complete the square for turning point form, state the turning point. Okay, part C. Now you'll remember the first step in completing the square is that you can only complete the square for a monic quadratic. Okay, so if it is a non-monic, we must factor out the 2. Now in some instances in our quadratic equations module, it was possible to, rather than just factor out the 2, to actually divide by 2 and get rid of it. But that was when the equation was equal to 0. If we were to divide both sides of the equation by 2 here, we get y divided by 2 on the left hand side and we don't get rid of the 2. So we don't divide, we don't um, try to get rid of it, we just factor it out. So factoring out 2, um, we get x squared plus 2x plus 9 on 2. Okay, now the key thing here is to not lose track of your 2. I want you to imagine that you've written it in red with those big red brackets and that you remember you don't lose track of it so that you remember to actually multiply it back in at the end. So I'm going to have 2 times and then inside here I'm going to focus on completing the square and then at the end we'll worry about putting the 2 back in. So we've got x squared plus 2x. We need to think about what to add and subtract in order to create the perfect square and then we've still got our plus 9 on 2. Okay, so half of 2 is 1, squaring 1 is 1, so we need to add on 1. That makes the perfect square. We're going to take it away as well, so we haven't actually changed the value of anything. Okay, so we've still got our 2. We've now got our perfect square, which is x plus 1 all squared. Remember, it's half of the plus 2. Um, and then outside there, we've got minus 1 plus 9 on 2. Minus 1 is minus 2 on 2 plus 2 on 2, so that is, sorry, minus 2 on 2 plus 9 on 2, so that is plus 7 on 2. Okay. All right, so now we can put the 2 back in. So we're going to do 2 times the bracket and 2 times 7 on 2, which isn't 14 on 2. Well, it is 14 on 2, but I want you to try and get in the habit of cancelling it down with the denominator rather than multiplying the numerator by 2. So we're going to have 2 lots of x plus 1, and then 7 on 2 times 2 is just 7, plus 7. So there it is in turning point form, the equation in turning point form, and the turning point, therefore, is going to be at negative 1, positive 7. So left by 1 and up by 7, turning point, therefore, at negative 1, 7. All right, part D. So again, it's non-monic. So something other than 1 in front of the x squared, and so we must factor that out first. So let's do that. We're going to have negative 2 this time. I'm going to take that out, and we get x squared plus 1 half x minus 21 on 2. Okay, keeping our negative 2 and worrying about completing the square. x squared plus half x. Now, Half of half is a quarter, okay? If you do half divided by two, you're doing half times a half, which is half of half, which is a quarter. Okay, so we're going to have a quarter, and then we square it, and so that will be one sixteenth. Okay, halving, which gives a quarter, and then squaring, which gives one sixteenth. So we're going to need to add on one sixteenth. I'm going to take away one sixteenth as well, so we haven't changed the value of anything. And then we've still got that minus 21 on 2. Okay, these first three terms here, that's our perfect square. Let's not lose track of the negative 2 with the big red brackets that we have to think about later. So we've got x plus, now remember the number in the bracket is half of that number. So half of positive a half is positive a quarter squared. And then you've got minus 1 on 16 minus 21 on 2. So maybe let's take a little extra step here to get a common denominator there. Minus 1 on 16 minus, now if we write that on 16, we've multiplied the denominator by 2, sorry, by 8, and so we also need to multiply the numerator by 8, so 8 times 21, 8 times 20 is 160, 8 times 1 is 8, so it's 168. 
Okay, so again, now let's just, we're still not going to expand this out just yet. So we've got our square completed inside the bracket, minus 1 16th minus 168 sixteenths is minus 169 sixteenths. Okay, so now we're going to multiply our negative 2 back in and we have negative 2 times x plus a quarter squared and it will be plus, now again let's not do 2 times 169 because the 2 will cancel down with the 16 to give 169 on 8. It also became positive 169 on 8 because it was negative times negative. Alright, so there is our completed the square, so turning point form and that then tells us that the turning point has coordinate of negative 1 quarter, we've gone to the left by a quarter, and positive 169 on 8. We've gone up by 169 on 8. Alright, example 2, let's take it that one step further and combine this video together with the previous one. Sketch this quadratic, clearly labelling the turning point and all axis intercepts with coordinates. So down the track we'll look at other methods for solving this, um, but Always a, a good method would be to first of all convert to turning point form. So let's do that first. So then we get a sense of what our graph looks like. So we've got negative 2x squared minus 4x minus 6. So the first thing we have to do is take out our negative 2. And when we do that, we'll get x squared plus 2x plus 3. And then we want to focus on completing the square inside the red bracket. So we've got x squared plus 2x half 2 is 1 and square it is 1 so we need to add on 1 to make the perfect square subtracting 1 to still keep uh, this line of working equal to the previous line and we've still got that plus 3 there okay so we've got negative 2 it's going to be x plus 1 all squared minus 1 and plus 3 is plus 2 all right and then last step is to expand out our bracket again so put that negative 2 back in so we've got negative 2 times x plus 1 all squared minus 4. Okay, so now that it's in turning point form, we can see that it is a, the shape of the graph is um, a sad parabola, okay, because of the negative 2 out the front reflected in the x-axis. We can see that the turning point is at negative 1, negative 4. And remembering we want to combine these two things together, turning point at sorry, turning point at negative 1, negative 4 and a sad shape, we're not going to have any x-intercepts here. So we don't need to calculate them, we just need our y-intercept. So we're getting 0. Ah, now, this is the other thing I want you to be careful about. Well, not careful, but um, an important, helpful thing. So what we have now here is, let me put a y back here where there should be, is two versions of the same equation. Okay, these are the same. We've just written it in a different way. We've got it expanded out up here and we've got um, turning point form uh, in the second one. So you can use either version of the equation depending on what you're trying to do. So obviously this version tells us immediately about the turning point. Also, if this equation did have x-intercepts, this is a much more helpful version for x-intercepts because we don't need any um, factorizing or quadratic formula, we can solve it by rearranging. Add 4 divided by negative 2 square root take away 1. Okay, um, This doesn't have x-intercepts, but this would be the preferred um, form of the equation to find the x-intercepts. However, when we want to find the y-intercept, when we let x equal 0, if we do that in this version, when you let x equal 0, that becomes 0, that becomes 0, and there's your y-intercept there at negative 6. Okay, so thinking flexibly, I'm just going to erase all that mess I've just made, um, so we've got room for our graph, but thinking flexibly about which version of your equation is better given what it is you're trying to calculate. So the y-intercept here, I'm looking at the top version which says that it's negative 2 times 0 squared minus 4 times 0 minus 6 and so it's negative 6. I wouldn't write out that first line of working, I'm just being clear about how I'm able to get straight away to the y-intercept. So y-intercept is at 0, negative 6, and we've got our turning point at negative 1, negative 4, no x-intercepts. Um, so, oops, sorry, let's think about what we've got here. So again, thinking about where you're going to put your x-axis, given what you know. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
Okay, so let's have our turning point there at negative 1, negative 4. We know we're going to go through 0, negative 6. So let's just mark ourselves a symmetric dot on the other side just so we can help get our graph shape symmetric. Can draw that again. Got a bit wobbly. Sometimes it's easy to sort of draw it in two halves, but make sure that your graph actually does round out to a turning point there. The risk people have when they draw the parabolas in two halves is they get a graph that does this, okay? So make sure that if you are going to draw it in two halves, nice rounded zero gradient here, and then round it again, okay? Um, all right, so we should have our graph, zero, negative six, turning point marked, at least two points, including the turning point. And so we've got everything we need there. Okay, work today is from exercise 7D in your textbook. So complete the work in your workbook. The questions are from your textbook.